is chocolate an aphrodisiac? Well, I would say yes. And here's why. And it opens up a very interesting conversation, in fact. I'd say there's four reasons why dark chocolate makes a great aphrodisiac. Actually, five. I'm going to add one more to the list that just came to mind. So first, cacao contains serotonin and tryptophan. The tryptophan actually gets turned into more serotonin in the body, and serotonin is your happiness chemical. It's your stress defense shield. It puts you in a happier place. If your serotonin is high, no matter how difficult things are in life, you're positive and you're going to figure out solutions and you're not going to let it get to you. If your serotonin is low, everything could be beautiful and wonderful around you. You could be with a perfect partner, yet you'll find every reason to be unhappy. So having healthy serotonin coming in from your food and, and getting, you know, having the tryptophan from the chocolate turned into serotonin is great. Uh, then another thing uh, is that cacao contains phenethylamine, also known as PEA, also known as the love bliss chemical. It's what's naturally secreted in your brain when you're in love. So having a little bit of extra love uh, feelings going on never hurts. And that's a big part of why you have this chocolate Valentine's Day connection going on. Then a lot of people, um, you know, aren't in the mood to become romantic, maybe because they're tired. And so how does chocolate help there? Well, chocolate is actually a lot lower in caffeine than a lot of people think. It contains at most 1 20th of a caffeine that you would find in a proportional amount of coffee. But it has a cousin of caffeine known as theobromine, which is pleasantly energizing, but doesn't stimulate the central nervous system in quite the same strong way that caffeine does. So it gives you some nice energy. We all experience a nice uh, little energy increase from high quality chocolate, but it's not something that's going to you know, keep you up out of control. You'll still be able to get good sleep. And then another reason is that cacao acts as a vasodilator, meaning you're going to get the blood, both for men and for women, flowing freely to where you want it to go to maximize performance, sensitivity, arousal, all of it. So uh, it's got a lot going for it there as well. Now, when we have chocolate, it also has this texture, this melting in your mouth. It has this rare property to it that it melts at a temperature very close to body temperature, which is what gives it that extraordinary mouthfeel experience. And what, you know, there's not that many foods that people have this deep emotional, like almost spiritual connection with in the way that they do with chocolate and have like, you know, almost, it may be inappropriate to say, but hey, it's the topic is like a sexual connection with chocolate. There's that magnetism there between people and chocolate. So it gets you feeling things. There's no question about it. Now, the ultimate question is, what do we define as an aphrodisiac? Because certainly even the greatest aphrodisiac in the world is not going to get you in the mood if you are in an extremely poor state of hormone health right? That's the key. You have to have the hormone health foundation in the right place. So if you want to talk more about that, you know, go ahead and send it in the question box and we can have a whole conversation about that. We've got other videos on our YouTube channel all about it. But healthy hormones is the foundation for then, you know, aphrodisiacs to come in and just tip you over the edge, get you really in the mood and feeling amazing and get certain biological things like the vasodilation happening that create the ultimate experience. Um, you know, and, and it also comes down to having a partner who you feel connected with and feel supported and feel attracted to. So there's a lot of factors here and you can't just expect, you know, one food or one herb to automatically overcome all reasons for not wanting to have sex, right? So there's a lot of variables here to consider, but if you get a lot of the other stuff lined up, you just need a, you know, a bit of a push over the edge, a little help, a little performance enhancement, um, a little uh, sensitivity enhancement, things like this, things like chocolate, and then also other herbs can be very helpful. You can look at uh, like schizandra, which is a great aphrodisiac herb and performance enhancer for both men and women. On the men's side, it helps to delay time to ejaculation, prevent premature ejaculation. On the women's side, it helps to uh, enhance what's called in, in the Chinese and Taoist systems, they called it the quantity and quality of the female elixir. That's your juices you get going down there. And it also enhances sensitivity for the female. 
So Shazandra is it's epic. Uh, and then you could also look look at things like we have in our love chocolate. That's what that chocolate is all about. So you have black ginger in there, another great vasodilator to really get the blood and circulation going. And then you have things like Makuna, the highest natural source of L-Dopa, precursor to dopamine, another great feel good neurotransmitter. And then you have things like Sistanch, um, which helps specifically to direct the blood flow south of the border to where you want it. Uh, and also is a bit energizing as well and it's gonna support you on the level of your kidneys and your adrenals. Now we also put other herbs in there that are not such overt aphrodisiacs, but help round out the whole experience. Things like Hoshu Wu, which is a great um, tonic for building your kidney adrenal core reserves. So this is not such a huge deal in, in this specific context for a woman, but for guys um, having lots of sex, you expand, expend a lot of energy and that needs to be replenished and Hoshi Wu can help there building what they call the Yin Jing. It's your reserve savings account of energy. Any guy who's ever been very active for a significant period of time knows that, well, you get a little bit tired afterwards and this helps to rebuild that so you can continue on. And then we also put reishi in there because, you know, the ultimate lovemaking experience is not just base chakra animalistic necessarily. Uh, it's that combined with a heart-centered connection. And reishi is one of the ultimate stress-reducing, mind-quieting, heart-opening herbs. So I love having a whole formulation and different uh, symphony of different things happening here. So you have like the chocolate, for example, which is gonna help with some of these feel-good neurotransmitters. It's gonna help, you know, kind of set the mood and have some fun and you have that texture and you have a food you can share with your partner that's really delicious and just kind of arouses you on many levels. And then you have these herbs in there that are gonna support everything you know you're supported and from the heart opening from the adrenal support uh from the aphrodisiacs and, and the vasodilation um you could look at epimedium as another herb uh, you know conventionally known as horny goat weed but it's an herb that's been used in asia for thousands of years um oh i forgot to mention with sistanch that it's actually the favorite herb of genghis khan so that tells you something right there so certainly to go back to the original question uh cacao is an aphrodisiac no aphrodisiacs can overcome, you know, everything else being out of place. But if you can kind of start lining up the dominoes in the right direction, chocolate combined with some of these other great herbs that we love so much can definitely start to knock those dominoes over. <laughs>